The last thing that we will cover in our beginner in design course is using the master pages to insert page numbers in the appropriate way. Master pages, if you look under the pages tab here in the palettes, master pages are above this line right here. A master page is where you can put elements that occur on more than one page, such as page numbers or logos and elements that appear in the corners of several pages throughout your publication. You can also have the information you're used to seeing on the bottom of magazines or the top, such as rules or lines, the issue, the month, the date, perhaps the name of that section of a larger publication, information that you'll find in the footer or the header area of a traditional document. Now, InDesign doesn't have a footer or a header area per se because it's really desktop publishing, not word processing. And you can use the master pages to put things that would normally go in the footer or the header and then they can appear on multiple pages by assigning those master pages to whatever pages you want it to appear on in your document. So for clarity, these are the master pages. These are your actual pages. So if you were to click here, you would see an empty set of left and right facing pages. And this is master A or the A master. You can have multiple masters. You simply add a new master. Now we've got an A master and a B master. Now you can also right click and say new master. And you do have access to change the prefix to whatever you wish, or even give it a name specific to its use, such as footer, header, advertising pages, whatever you want to call it. You can also decide if this is a master page that applies to just one page or multiple pages. If you're confused right now, don't worry. Just make sure that you have found the pages palette, the area above this line where the master pages reside. Understand that your regular actual pages, double click and you're back into this um, view that you're used to. These are your regular pages with your actual work on them. And make sure that you either right click up here and say new master or select a master page and say new to add another master. Sound good? So we've got a master A and a master B. All right, so why do we learn all this stuff? Well, the only way to do effective, proper page numbers the right way is to use the master page functionality. So let's go and select master page A, so A master, double click on that. And you can see that A master is selected. And down below, we're seeing our master page. All right, let's zoom in a little bit. Control plus plus. Hold the space bar down and move to the bottom. And we have a couple of choices to make. Do we want to put our page number in the middle or in the outer corners of each page? Totally a style preference. You just want to be consistent. It's a choice for your publication. The only rule is stick with what you choose. Um, for consistency and style. So let's put it in the center for now. How do we do that? Under the type menu, you'll see insert special character. And under markers, you'll find the current page number. Now it's grayed out because what you have to do first is create an empty text box for it to put this special character in. So let's go to the text box. Oh, sorry, the text tool. Let's go to the text tool and we'll draw a small text box. And to make sure this is set up the way we want it, let's go to our paragraph options and make sure that our cursor is centered in the box. And let's do some alignment. Let's make sure this text box is exactly in the center of the page. Choose the selection tool. The box should still be selected. 
And then if you don't have this palette open, let's open up a new palette. It's under Objects and Layout. Choose Align. This should have given you a pop-up of a new palette. You can dock this palette. The Align palette is very popular, very useful. And you can see a lot of options here. Under Align to, right click and choose Align to Page. This allows you to align this object to the exact center of a page. And if you float over any of these, their descriptor is quite clear about what it does. Now we can talk more about the align functionality in our advanced InDesign course. But for now, this is just a great way to be sure that something like a page number is in the exact center of the page. But remember, you have to say align to page. Align to selection is a whole different idea. Now, in a simpler sense, if you do grab this text box and start to move it around, and it's a little bit tedious to grab it, you might have to zoom in, control plus. As you move around, you will get the option for perfect center. You can see that that suggestion guide is popping up. Now sometimes these guides can lie to you because there could be something higher up on the page that it, it's offering alignment with. Do you want to align with some object that we have higher up in the page? So at times that can be something that you can't trust. That said, when you see that sort of purpley pink color, uh, it's generally referring to the page itself, not to other objects. So that is another great way to center this object in the exact center of the page. Okay, so let's double click and make sure our cursor is still inside that box. And now we should have the ability under the type menu to insert our special character. Remember, we've got the cursor centered inside the text box, and we've got the text box itself centered to the page. Go to the Type menu, make sure your cursor is down there blinking. Go to Insert Special Character, go to Markers, and say Current Page Number. Now don't worry, that letter A, of course, is not the page number. It's just a placeholder to let you know that this is the page number on the A master. Now, this is a master that we will apply to any pages where we want the page number to be appearing on both pages. So we want to copy this over to there. Now the one really convenient thing is that since this is a intelligent character, it's a special character and the computer, the software itself, InDesign, will fill in the appropriate page wherever it's needed. All we have to do is select this box, copy it, paste it, and move it over to the other page. There's our center mark. And that's great, we know it's centered this way. But here's where alignment really comes in. How do we know that this and this page number are exactly straight across from each other? That kind of exact consistency is very important in professional desktop publishing. Now there's two things you can do. You can bring down a ruler. And if you haven't brought a ruler down before, rulers are easy and they're at your disposal. In both of these rules, these rulers, you can bring down guides. So with the guide, you can bring down this guide and that guide, make sure they're exactly with each other. And then you can compare and use that to ensure that you're both centered in the page and perfectly in alignment with the other page. You can also use a line for this if you chose both. Both objects, hold shift to select both objects. I should put one of them out of alignment just to show the example. So there we go, we're off alignment. Select both again. Open up that align tab again. And this time we're not aligning to the page. We're gonna align to selection or selections. So switch this align to back to align to selection. What we're looking for is 
align vertical centers. Now, any one of these will work in this case, but align vertical center is a good go-to. So let's choose that. Perfect. They've both aligned to each other. Now, they're still both selected, so if I want to drag them down a little bit, I could do that because they're still selected together. So many ways to do it, but be sure that you do do it because that kind of exactness may not be noticed right away by the reader, but if it's off, it'll definitely make your publication look amateurish, not professional. Okay, so we've got these two page numbers here, and we should be able to apply that to any page we want and get uh, page numbers. Now, here's a little mystery. Here's a little mystery with InDesign that causes people a lot of confusion. Let's go to the Layers tab for a second. Notice that even if you're on Master Pages, our two layers we created, background images and text, etc., are still there. What this means is that the layers and which layer is on top of each other still comes into play when you're using master pages. What am I getting at here? If you put these special characters on a background layer, then your page numbers will be underneath your text or any other layers that you may have above. So a good rule is to add a separate layer. Call this layer master page stuff. Doesn't really matter as long as you know what it is. And then let's see. Okay, so we've got our characters here, our special characters on the text, etc. layer. But we want to put them on the very top layer. If not, you won't see them. And I can show you this once we're done. So let's copy and paste, well, I should say cut and paste, our characters from this layer to the new layer we've created. Pretty easy to do. So just to confirm, you can use the visibility button to see what layer they're on. We've selected that layer. That's good. Select both. Hold shift if you need to. And control X. Or you can go to the edit menu and say cut if you really, really wish. Now they've been cut. Now change layers. And with that layer selected, do a paste. Control V. Now, did you notice that they didn't go into the same spot? You don't have to accept that. Let's undo that. Control Z. And there's another way to paste. Edit, paste in place. This is a great tip because it's going to paste it into the page or the other page you're copying to in the exact same positioning on that page. So, paste in place. There we go. They're pasted in their original position, just on a different layer. Okay, let's go back to our Pages tab. So we're changing from the Layers tab back to the Pages tab. And here's our A Master. Now, you'll see that there's a little A in each one of these pages. That means that by default, your A Master is applied to all of these pages. So that means you should already have anything that we've put on the A Master should already be appearing on all of our pages. Let's go have a look. To get back to your actual work, not your master pages, just double click on any of these and there you go. There's our page number. Now obviously there's a little bit of work to be done. Perhaps the page number needs to be lower or with the page number in place we need to rethink some of our um, alignments and arrangements of our text. Let's have a look over here. It's a little dark but it is there. You can't see it. It's right on this tie. There's three, there's five, four, perfect. Now, in one case, there's not really any point to have a page number here because it's on a dark tie. And if this was the cover of our article or magazine, booklet, whatever you're calling it, no one really puts page one on the cover. It's pretty obvious that the cover is page one. <laughs> so how do we choose to not have a master page um, content appear on a page? Very easy. Do you see this master page that it's called none? It's not really a master page. It's just the option for no master page. If you simply drag this down, 
click and hold and drag on the None page in the master area and put it on your cover, you see that the A disappeared. Let's do it as well to the page 2 where the number is uh, on front of his dark tie. Drag that down to just the left page, keeping it on the right page. So now we have no master on the cover, no master on page 2, but on 3, 4, and 5 you can see the A. Let's go have a look. Double click to switch back to your content. Okay, well, it's not easy to see, but trust me, there's no page number there anymore. It's still here, and if we go up to our cover, no page number. So this is a really quick and easy way to apply page numbers to any of your pages and remove it when you don't want it. Now, what about the layers thing? I made you make a separate layer. Let's see what happens if I drag the master page layer and put it underneath my my background images. And remember, I've got some full-sized images here. I got a, uh, a photo here that goes right to the bottom of the page, and I've got a photo here that goes right to the bottom of the page. And look, the page number is here, but wherever there's any kind of a background image or a background color on a page, you can't see the page number anymore because the content on the master page is actually on a layer below my content. And this can happen very easily by default. If you were to put the master page information on the same page as text and you had some kind of element on that layer or another layer that went down where the page number was, it would cover it over potentially. The chances are quite high. So as a good practice, as a general practice, create a separate layer on the very top of everything that's strictly just to put things on when you're working on master page content. That way, your page numbers are always on top. You can see it's come back. Put it on the bottom, it's gone. Put it on the top, it's there. So just always remember to put a separate layer for your master page content on top of all your layers. Okay, before we finish up, let's just talk about a couple more things that would and could go on a master page. So double click on your A master, or actually let's go to our B master. So double click on the B master. You may see in certain publications that they have a little logo up in the corner or an identification of some kind. And you can do things like that in the master page and it can save you some time and effort. For example, you could put a little red square here and it's okay that's actually good that it's bleeding off the corner like that. I'll make it a little smaller, but keep that little bit of bleeding off the edge. That's a good thing as we talked about in previous videos. And then let's create a text box and put a nice big B for Bruce Lee and go to our character options and see how big we can make that. Eh, a little bigger. There we go. And move that up and put that right here. There we go. A little more work. Maybe tweak this down a little bit. Excellent. As a review, we could change the color of the text. We could select the B, go to swatches, make sure you're on the fill, not the stroke, and change it to a paper. Close swatches, back to the selection tool, deselect, looks kind of cool. Open up your pages palette, and let's assign the B master to just one page in particular. We don't want it here. We want to put the B master on this page only, not on the cover, not on this page, but we'll put it here on page five. You can see that the B is here, the A is there. So you do have the drag both sides if you want to assign a master page to both the left and the right, but that is a good thing. It's flexible, allows you to have a master page content here that's different than the page facing it. Okay, let's have a look. How do we get back there? Double click on one of your actual pages and you're back into your real content. So nothing on the cover page because we would design the cover separately. On this page, oh, let's push W. Push W to get a sort of virtual look of what it could really look like. Okay, so scrolling to the bottom, there's our page number, which is on master page A. Remember we didn't, or we dragged none 
down to page two so that we didn't have a page number that wasn't really necessary. And then keep scrolling down. Page four. Yep, master A. And over here, no page number because master B doesn't have a page number on it. You could put it there, but we didn't. And if we've done our work correctly on master B, there's a decorative logo element on the top corner. We'll close pages down. Hold the ship. There we go. So it needs a little bit more adjusting to get the B centered nicely in the red square and some little changes and adjustments. But it does show you exactly how you can use a master page in a creative way. If you've seen this on a magazine appearing throughout the, the pages at different times, you don't have to recreate it. You can put it in a master page, have a master page created specifically for pages that have this decorative logo and the page number in the bottom. And then wherever you want it throughout the publication, just drag down the master and assign it. And you can do work like this quick and apply it to multiple pages. Don't forget, you can also use the master pages for putting uh, issue, the name of the publication, uh, the date, whatever kind of information you're often seeing when you look at the footer, the header area of a publication, anything like that that has to be displayed over and over on multiple pages using the master page is how you do that effectively and quickly.